Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to activate the advanced developer mode that we have found on this range of LG. Now I mentioned it before, I don't know if any other ranges have this mode and yeah, as no one's ever tried it as far as I know um, on anything other than this range. Firstly, it has no official name. The advanced developer mode is just kind of what the three of us, me, LG Washington 2005 and Washington Fan 1200, it kind of the name we came up with between ourselves. Um, as obviously, as far as we know, no one else has discovered it, so obviously it doesn't have a name. So, firstly, I'm just going to show you a couple of things. This is in normal mode. So, firstly, the spin only is 15 minutes at 1400. Um, the drying cycle, including the dry and spin, by default is 3 hours 54. And what else can we show you? The rinse and spin is 20 minutes by default. Bear that in mind. Now, for this, I'm going to have to basically drain the power from the machine by switching off at the wall, otherwise this will not work. And yes, that does power the machine up because it drains the power itself. So right, leave it off for a couple of seconds, make sure it's fully drained. And I can switch it back on. Now, you want to hold the start button, the spin button, time delay, and whatever option is here. So in my case, because it's a washer dryer, it's medic rinse. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head what option is here on uh, on non on washing machine only, but it'll be that option. It'll power on normally, but if you press spin, you'll notice the time is 17 minutes now. And the dry and spin, I mean the dry and cycle, including the dry and spin, three hours 52 by default. And rinse and spin, 22 minutes. So we are now in advanced developer mode. And to prove it, service mode. So there we go, it went to 15.30, uh, that is as high as it will go in service mode. On a normal spin it will go up to 15.85, but it will only show 157 on the um, on that speed reading measurement for some reason. But I have measured it with a tachometer at 15.85. So yeah, goes to 1600, um, but it also forces multi-directional balancing and spinning. Uh, it is much more sensitive anti-clockwise, but the clockwise sensitivity remains the same, so basically it doesn't care clockwise. Um, it also, on cotton 40, maximum net cotton 40, the intermediate spins are 1000 instead of 1200. Um, and the same applies on maximum net cotton 60 with intensive, 
again, the intermediate spins are 1,000, so it will never do anything over 1,000 in advanced developer mode. It will also, what else won't it do? It changes some of the cycle lengths as well. Um, if I, I'll fill it with water. No, I won't, because that's going to take too much time. But basically, the cycle lengths change on pretty much every maximum length cycle. So, you know, Cosson 60 is normally 3 hours and 2 minutes. Cosson 40 is normally 3 hours and 5 minutes. Those are both now 2 hours and 40 minutes for Cosson 60, 2 hours 45 for Cosson 40. The reason being, there is no 36 minute final spin for a 1600 RPM spin, basically. So in place of the 36 minute final spin, there is just the normal 17 minute 1600 spin, which is why the time decreases. Other than that, the 60 degree cycle is exactly the same. The 40 degree cycle is the same, but the spin speeds are the normal 1000 instead of 400, 1200, 1200, if that makes sense. Um, I forget how long the 60 intensive version is, and I also forget how long the Eco 60 intensive is. Um, but yeah, so basically nothing, uh, it, it basically takes away the customizability of individual cycles. So all intensive will do in advanced developer mode is increase the time. I don't know if it changes the heating on minimum length 60, um, obviously intensive being eco on 60. Don't know whether it changes the, the temperature, I haven't tried it. But it definitely changes the spin speed and some of the timings are a little different too. I have played around with this a lot. I think it was coming up to a year ago now that I actually discovered it was doable on mine. So yeah, I think that's everything. Um, oh, the drying spin is interesting. You notice it's the only one that decreases in time by two minutes. The rest of them increase by two minutes. Now this is because if you haven't seen the drying spin video I made in advanced developer mode, basically what it does is it's still the same three phases. The 400 RPM phase, so phase 1, and the 1000 RPM phase, i.e. phase 2, are identical to the normal drying spin. The third phase is basically the main burst of the standard 17 minute final spin. So it doesn't have a long hold like the standard drying spin. And because the standard drying spin holds at 1400 for, I think it's over 8 minutes, maybe 8.5 minutes, I can't remember exactly. And it holds in advanced development mode for three minutes or so at 1400, then 80 seconds at, at 1600. There's a couple of minutes uh, different. Now that is nearly four minutes difference, but there's only two minutes difference in the timing. So it's a little off. And I don't think my explanation is that good either. Now, to exit this boat, you noticed I've turned it on and off several times. It will, as long as you don't time out the uh, circuit board, if that makes sense, as long as you don't time out the PCB, it will stay in this mode. So um, I can let it turn off by itself, or alternatively, manually turn it off. That itself is not gonna deactivate it. For example, if I now go back in, and press dry, you'll notice it's still in advanced developer mode. If you leave it off until the spin break deactivates, it will reset to normal mode, because um, then it's effectively drained the power that isn't coming in, if that makes sense. Um, alternatively, you just switch it off at the wall, and obviously it'll power up to drain the residual power of the machine. Now when you turn it back on, it will be back to normal. 
So yeah, it doesn't mess with the machine at all. It's perfectly safe to use. Um, if it spins too unbalanced in advanced irrelevant mode, it will limit to 1450 so that it doesn't blow itself up from spinning at 1600 really, really unbalanced. Not that I think it would because these are built really well. Um, but yeah, and anyone concerned about noise, especially from LG's traditional noisy shocks, um, it actually gets really quiet when it surpasses 1400, um, when it's on a normal cycle. Obviously the service mode spin doesn't because the shocks are basically cold and hence they're very noisy, um, which you would have noticed actually in the service mode spin. Um, yeah, it is very rattly at the moment, but it's eight years old and LGs are known for their knocking. Um, doesn't bother me too much. Uh, it's just where the drum is a bit uneven. So because of that, the um, as it spins up, obviously the shocks knock a lot, and because they're cold, it amplifies it. So yeah. Anyway, this was just a quick video, um, which I was supposed to do a good long time ago, actually. But I decided I'll do it now as an off-schedule video. Um, so yeah, feel free to try it on any other ranges of LG. Let me know whether it works on any other ranges of LG. Um, probably not the same combination of buttons. Um, but yeah, try as many combinations as you want. Um, I, I don't think trying different combinations of buttons is going to hurt. If it enters a mode you don't know anything about, unplug, plug it back in, should return it to normal. Anyway, hope this helps, thank you very much for watching this video, hope you enjoyed it. If you did then please leave a like, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.